Hello, in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through adding electives and alternates to your academic plan in Infinite Campus. The first thing that a student would need to do is to log in uh, using their Chromebook is um, a better platform than using a, a, a phone, for example. Um, you would want to log in and then use your uh, class link um, dashboard to access Infinite Campus, the student portal. Once you're in Infinite Campus on the student portal, you'll see this index on your left hand side and you'll want to click on academic plan. The first screen that appears on the academic plan is just some plans for what you're planning to do after high school. Uh, you can make some changes in the post-grad and the post-grad plans. I'm not going to do that at this time, so we're going to proceed into the heart of the academic plan, which looks like this. So a few things I want to point out to you is that the academic plan is ordered by grade level. And so you can see 9th, 10th, 11th grade and 12th grade um, in columns along the academic plan. Um, for this particular student, um, they're a 10th grader with an incomplete plan, um, with that aside, uh, but next year they're going to be in 11th grade, and so in 11th grade we can see that the student is already going to be in American Lit, which is a required course for graduation, along with ninth lit in ninth grade, tenth lit in tenth grade, and Brit lit or uh, AP lit or dramatic writing, perhaps in uh, the twelfth grade year. If you are a student who, instead of American lit, is interested in uh, AP language and composition, and you qualify for AP lang and composition, you are not able to change that core class. You will need to schedule an appointment with your counselor, uh, and your counselor will be able to uh, make modifications to your core classes. In math, we can see that this student has been recommended by his math teacher to be an Algebra 2. Uh, and next year, pre-calculus is listed as the 12th grade. Students are required to take four years of a math. In science, we can see that this student is scheduled to take uh, physics in 11th grade year. Uh, and that was recommended by the student's current science teacher. And in the 12th grade school year, um, the student um, is electing to um, take microbiology. In science, students are required to take biology, chemistry or environmental science, physics or physical science, and then their fourth year of science, they have an elective option. Uh, and some courses are rigor courses in science, and some courses are not. Microbiology happens to be a rigor course, which is probably why that's in the student's academic plan. In social studies, students are required to take three years of social studies to graduate. That includes world history or AP world history, uh, U.S. history or AP U.S. history. And again, if this student is uh, scheduled to take uh, U.S. history, but instead is qualified for AP U.S. history, then the student would make an appointment with their counselor to add AP U.S. history. Uh, and the counselor would replace AP U.S. history um, um, in place of regular U.S. history. And then in 12th grade year, uh, the requirement for graduation in 12th grade is government and economics. Students take a semester of government and a semester of economics or uh, AP government and AP economics are replacement courses for 12th grade social studies. Uh, in PE and health, that is our last core content area, students would typically have uh, physical fitness, personal fitness, uh, or, and health in the ninth grade. So this would be the only thing that's required for a student in the PE and health area. If a student is interested in um, um, PE department electives like weight training, those are entered in a different um, area on the academic plan. So what I want to point out that this student, you'll see this alert, does not have enough credits planned. Um, in, a seventh in a seven period day, students would need to take seven credits uh, to complete their schedule and the student is lacking. I know it says four out of six, that would be if they're only taking six classes, but uh, at our high schools we take seven uh, typically and then so that needs to be uh, seven uh, courses out of six when we finish to have a full um, set of four core courses and three electives. That's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to select some electives and I notice um, that this student has not had a world language. If that student is interested, like they indicated, in taking some um, in-state uh, four-year college, then they're going to want to have um, 
two years of a world language. So the options that are available when I click in this field would be French 1, Spanish 1, German 1, and Latin 1. So this student is interested in taking Spanish 1. So we're going to click on Spanish 1. Notice that the other um, world language um, classes were grayed out, which means that student had not had the prerequisite because you would need to build on levels. So Spanish 1 is the first level that this particular student uh, can take in 11th grade. Uh, I want to point out that this is not enough because we need to have um, whole numbers, not half numbers. So we want to um, make sure that we add the second half of Spanish, which is Spanish 1B. Uh, at the high school, we schedule for the full year. And so for the full year, we would have to add the um, course A side and the courses B side. In this case, we have Spanish 1A and Spanish 1B. That's 0.5 credits each. So that should bring us up closer to that um, 7. 0, which is what we're looking for. All right, so in the world language, we're set there. And then if we look at some other options, uh, the other two electives, they can be in career technical, um, fine arts would be a possibility, and then we have just uh, general electives. So the student has heard all about healthcare and would like uh, his opportunity to be in healthcare. And so we notice that um, these courses that are grayed out, we can't pick, but these ones that are appearing in, in bold are options. I'm looking for healthcare. If I scroll through and I see that there is intro to healthcare. So I click on intro to healthcare, make sure that I'm adding both sides of the healthcare class. If I try to add essentials, for example, essentials of healthcare, notice I get red there. So essentials of healthcare is the second level of the healthcare pathway. And so a student needs to have completed successfully the intro to healthcare full year uh, in order to be able to take essentials. So maybe that's an option for uh, senior year, but notice that essentials of healthcare is not a, a course that is in just black print on the academic plan. It's highlighted in this red warning uh, color. So we want to make sure that we don't get any of those because you won't be able to save your academic plan if you're trying to put a course into your plan that you do not have the prerequisite for. So um, just to be sure, another good tool that I'll just point you to up at the top is this course catalog. And if I want to know why can I take essentials? So why is it red? If I start typing in, I can see that essentials to healthcare. Uh, here is what we see. So the prerequisite is required that I should have had intro to healthcare one. So that is why that I'm getting that error message. And there's a nice description there too of that course. So I come back down and then I'm going to X that out because if I don't, I'm not able to save my academic plan, which is right here, the save button. And you'll notice you're gonna get a warning message that says you're not able to save your plan at all, even the Spanish that you added, because you cannot add essentials to healthcare because you don't have the required intro to healthcare. So you're gonna get a warning message. So in order to avoid that, you're going to X that out and make sure you don't have any of those red courses listed. So now I have, uh, I'm closer to getting my three electives. Let's say that I've heard a lot about um, a course like current issues. So if I go to type in current issues, I notice, oh, current issues isn't even an option. Why is a current issues an option? It's not even listed in this drop down. I've heard a lot about it. Again, I might want to come back up here and see current issues. Why can't I take current issues? Current issues, you must be in the 12th grade. So there are some grade prerequisites and some course prerequisites. So I realized that I'm not going to be able to put that into my 11th grade plan for an elective, but I did notice as I was scrolling that there was psychology. Can I put psychology in? I can. So psychology is a course that our 11th and our 12th graders are able to take. And I wanna make sure I put in two halves. So I get the full year. Uh, and then I go back up to check my course count and there I am. I have seven courses that are being planned for my schedule in 11th grade. Uh, my English, my math, which is required along with English, science and a social studies, and I'm adding three electives, one each from um, the world language, the career technical, and this general elective. Um, if you might be interested in a fine arts, let's say that you are um, eager to pick back up the trumpet 
that you haven't played uh, since middle school. Um, we will typically use um, an audition to find the best placement for you in both orchestra and band. So if you start typing in band, you have a band elective placeholder. That's going to tell your counselor, and that's going to tell uh, the registrar at your school that you are interested in being auditioned for a band. Um, so you would put in both sides of that. Okay, and the same thing is done with orchestra. There is an orchestra elective here. Um, make sure you put in both if you're planning to do orchestra and you're looking to be auditioned for uh, a band placement or orchestra placement um, in the fine arts. Uh, fine arts that don't have a um, prerequisite or an audition would be um, chorus. So if you are interested, you can begin in women's chorus or in men's chorus as an option women's course. You would not need an option for that. Um, if you're interested in the visual arts, uh, and if you want to take visual arts, there is not a prerequisite. You can start that course uh, um, at any time, um, and so that's an option. But if I tried to put in, for example, a drawing class, like drawing two, notice I get that red again, because we have pathways, even in the fine arts and the career technical and world language, in which case you have to have prerequisite levels before you can advance into the upper levels. And that is true here. Uh, and that's why I have a red um, drawing and painting too, because I don't have the prerequisite. If I tried to save it, it would tell me that I don't have the prerequisite, that I need to have a, um, a drawing and painting one prior to that. So be aware of those um, red courses, don't add them. You won't be able to add them, you'll be able to save, exit out on that one. And so that takes me through three electives. Um, and that completes a schedule. But just in case, um, I've planned for an elective and that elective like a popular elective like intro to healthcare science doesn't make it into my schedule, then I have to have some backups. And at the bottom in the alternates is where we plan our backups. Uh, so I noticed that these are my possibilities for alternates. I have a lot of alternate choices. Uh, here's an 11th grader. And so let's say that I'd like to be, um, I'd like to try guitar. I have not had the opportunity. I am musical, but I um, might not want to pick up that trumpet again, but I'd like to try guitar. So guitar would be an option for me. Notice that I'm able to enter that. The things that I'd like for you to um, pay attention to here in the alternates is that those are, um, those are placed into your alternates in order of preference. So if I really want to be in guitar over, say, intro to business, how, um, intro to business leads to financial uh, literacy and would lead to um, um, a banking and insurance class in um, the third level, then I would want to place guitar higher in the list than intro to business. If you want to move these around, you use the arrow. So you can bring intro to business up if you change your mind to bring that up to the top of the list by using the arrows and you advance them through. And so intro to business now takes my priority space in the alternates over beginning guitar. Uh, you should add at our uh, counselor's request an additional three more alternates. We want to have a total of five. So I would add all those in just in case. And remember that you're adding those um, as alternate courses that you would not mind seeing in your schedule just in case a uh, elective choice that you have placed into your um, elective areas of your academic plan uh, don't work out. So right now I have the both halves of intro to business, both halves of guitar, uh, both halves of intro to digital technology, which is um, part of our computer science uh, pathway, nutrition and wellness, which is going to lead to uh, food um, for life and food science. I need one more. So let's go and say, oh, I've heard a lot about audiovisual tech and film, which has three courses also to it, but I'm only allowed to take the intro class because I don't have the prerequisites to be in audiovisual tech and film too. So I add those and I count that I have one, two, three, four, five alternates. Those are not calculating into my number at the top my, uh, of my credit total. Um, that shows that I have my four core courses and my three electives and then my alternates. This looks like a great 
um, academic plan. I hit save on that. I shouldn't have any error messages. It just tells me that uh, my plan doesn't have enough of certain core areas, but I'm not getting any um, error messages. So I hit OK, and that should keep my academic plan. So just to sum up, you want to make sure that you're looking for your core classes, um, making sure you have enough of those. They should be locked into your schedule. Um, if they are locked and you're looking to take an AP replacement for some of these um, core classes, you'll need to make an appointment with your counselor. Your counselor will be able to modify that for you. Um, you want to take a look at your electives. Um, notice that I saved and those electives are still listed in my academic plan. If you wanted to take, for example, AP Psychology that you're qualified for instead of the, the regular Psychology and Sociology, if you tried to put in AP, uh, you won't be able to because your counselor will need to put in your AP courses for you if you qualify, uh, and that will be done through an individual appointment. But you go ahead and place psychology and sociology in here, for example, uh, until you can meet with your counselor and they can replace um, that psych and sociology elective with a full year of AP psychology. And then notice we have our five alternates here listed at the bottom, just enough to make sure if some of these electives that we've chosen don't make it into our schedule that we have alternates as backups that we would not be uh, that we would not mind being scheduled into our um, schedule for next school year so that wraps up how you would enter uh, information into your academic plan for questions about um, your academic plan, the four-year plan, um, electives and pathways that are offered at your school, you definitely want to talk to your um, counselor uh, and you might want to take a look at um, the website because um, the counselors and the registrars update uh, the school's website with information about pathway courses. Um, if you were a Macintosh student, you would see that under student resources, uh, and curriculum and eighth grade transition. Uh, we have links to videos about electives, um, handouts about the four-year plan. Um, so consider taking a look at some of your um, school's um, resources on their website. And I appreciate you taking the time to take a look at the academic plan in Infinite Campus and happy academic planning.